my goal is to get the people who want to be free all on the same side against the people who don't want them to be free. This movie idea is just, it's, it's the best way I've ever seen um, that I can hopefully contribute to, to, to actually get these ideas to way more people. We are here to talk about a really cool idea that this guy had um, after seeing the short animated version of a video I wrote called The Jones Plantation, which I forget how many years ago that came out. Uh, someone else animated it and someone else uh, did the voices for it. I just wrote the script. Um, and he came to me with the idea of what about making that into a full length live action feature. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought that's just brilliant and it has so much potential um, for so much more substance and impact than the little animated version. And the little animated version, I've had tons of people say, whoa, that's so impactful and so powerful. Just that sort of silly little thing. A summary for people who don't know of what the Jones Plantation is. I'll make it like super short. Um, basically takes place in, in Antebellum South on a slave plantation. And there's, you know, there's the the slave owner running his cotton plantation and has a bunch of slaves and starting to have problems with them, them getting uppity and rebellious and, and disobedient and talking about running away and revolting and, and that sort of thing. And he hears rumor of somebody who who has some rather unorthodox methods of of dealing with such problems and making such problems go away. And then along comes Mr. Smith. Um, who who basically tells Mr. Jones, owner of the plantation, if you will let me handle things, if you just stay out of the way and let me handle things and shut up, don't interfere, I will fix your problems. And so it, it very, very quickly gets into the point where, where Mr. Smith is basically telling the slaves, you're free now and you can leave if you want to. You probably shouldn't. And it gets into you know his, his spin about why it would be dangerous for them to leave the plantation. But now you're free and now we should work together and but we're going to keep we're going to keep Mr. Jones here, you know, managing the place. And um, we'll actually we'll have a way so you can watch the animated version um, for a, a longer version of what it is. But what it really gets into is the the difference between just physical slavery of I'm just forcibly capturing you and making you work for me and the much more insidious and scary uh mental and, and psychological and, I mean, you could even call it spiritual slavery of controlling people's minds and their perceptions and stuff. And so it, it, it starts by just, you know, being sort of a, a, a story of, oh, this is, you know, another story about slavery and how bad it is, but it gets into something way more all encompassing and way more like profoundly evil to, to the depths that evil can get to as far as people wanting to dominate and own other human beings. Um, and so you start to see the games that are, and the, the manipulations that are played by, by Mr. Smith to basically enslave, enslave people even better than they were enslaved before while making them think they're free. I have an unpleasant duty to do today, he said. Yesterday, Charles was caught keeping some of the cotton he picked, presumably to sell for his own personal profit. That is against the rules. That is stealing. For that, Charles must be punished. Two men tied Charles to the whipping post. I take no joy in this, Mr. Smith continued, but you must understand if we do not maintain order, if we do not have rules that we all abide by, then the plantation will fail and we will all suffer. The whip cracked against Charles' back. But if we all pitch in for the common good, then we can all prosper. Being free doesn't mean you should be selfish and greedy. And the the obvious goal here when you when you see the movie, even if you just see the animated one, you realize is to make people see this is already how the political process works. And this is already like these things already happen in the real world and what's passed off as freedom and democracy and, and all these things and the spin that, that that politicians always use and that that those who grab power you know, nobody grabs power and says, I'm grabbing this power just because I like it. It's like, no, I'm there to serve you. And so it's a really fun way. I, I admit that I have a lot of fun writing the devious, slimy, manipulative dialogue of how 
people can do that to other people, how they can control people um, just by spinning the words and spinning the concepts and, and tricking and deceiving people and manipulating them. And I think the power in this and the importance of this, the animated version, but then making a real movie out of it, is when people can see how those tricks work, the tricks don't work on them anymore. And so I know a lot of people, even just seeing the the animated version, said, whoa, uh, yeah, that's what we have now, <laughs> isn't it? So and but there's so much more opportunity in doing a, a full length movie to to really dig into the depths of of, you know, what it's like to treat human beings as livestock and manipulate them and degrade them down to just property just using words. And I'd love for, you know, the whole world to to see that and understand it. So they stop falling. for it. So that's the short version. Yeah. Yeah. We met. In Acapulco, and we interviewed Larkin, and um, and then I watched that short. We watched the short, and uh, I started thinking that'd be that'd be an interesting film, that'd be an interesting film. And I was thinking that'd be a good short film. And I was like, no, wait, that'd be a really good feature film. <laughs> and then I started thinking of the opening scene, and the, I was thinking about the opening scene. I wrote the whole opening scene in my head, and I was like, okay, I got to stop doing this. And I reached out to Lark and I was like, I have this idea. I want to make this feature film. I said, should I stop thinking about this? <laughs> are you interested? And he was like, that's a great idea. And so then here we are. And so the idea is the short is sort of like the 30,000 foot. This is what's going on. And this is when we really go in and peel the onion. Yeah. And and it's the effect that it's going to have in the audience is going to be so much more profound than the short. Yeah. Like we want to make an indie cult classic that transcends and we have a real lane because nobody's making this kind of work, mm -hmm. but we want to make a serious, um, psychotic, uh, horrifying, suspenseful, uh, entertaining film and have yeah. a much more sophisticated effect on the audience. Yeah. And really just delve into the depths of just how evil the, the, the love of dominion can be. The people who literally their lives are about, dominating other human beings. It's not even just about, I want money and I don't care about other people. It's like an extra level of evil beyond that. It's not even about the money. Yeah. The it's, money is just the currency that proves that you're powerful. Yeah. Basically. It's just about the power. And yeah. in, in, like in the, in a full length feature, we can make Mr. Smith, we can really flesh out that character and show just how much of a power happy sociopath he is. Like he's not even doing it for the money. He's doing it for the love of being able right. to play people like, Pawns. Right. And, and and again, first and foremost, it's going to be a really entertaining, engaging film. Yeah. Like I said, indie cult classic. Something that's important to point out, too, is that there's a lot of opportunity for the film to be, in this case, for the film to be entering into a market where so many people, for different reasons, are going to be open to the message of the film, but the film is is going to be sort of impacting in its surprisingness. So the, there's going to be a surprising element of it where um, it, sort of in the way that um, Braveheart, uh, V for Vendetta and The Matrix were all impacting and even so, and, and they were all some of them, you know, you could argue might have been cheesy in different ways or had problems with them. And yet everyone has a fan base and there are people to this day, there are millions of people all over the world who can tell you that those movies are one of those movies is in their top five and it has a very distinct following. So it's like Braveheart has got people that will tell you Braveheart's their favorite movie and V for Vendetta has had posters all over people's walls and the masks have been made because of the movie. And so there's powerful, potent opportunity here. But this is another thing where just like V for Vendetta when it came out in 2005, there's relevance to things that are going on in the real world. But the public is not going to be quite prepared for just how much this is going to impact them. And so it'll be more impacting because they're not quite prepared for it. It'll right. be powerful, but surprising in its power. Yeah. So it isn't just, it isn't just telling people here's what's wrong with the world and telling them what they already know. And like, yeah, rah, rah, rah. It's and it, like the matrix. It was about the message and people going, Holy smokes. That has so many parallels to like it, it teaches somebody about the world by telling them a fictional story that has nothing to do with today, but actually has everything to do with today. And, and in a you know, feature-length film, we can really get into it way more than the little animated thing did. But I also think one of the most important things is that, unlike probably any of the other videos I've made, 
this one can be made into a, a, a very mainstream movie, even though it, it will be very different from pretty much everything else out there. Um, because there's nothing in it that sort of, there's nothing in it to scare anybody away. It's not like, oh, the, right. they're coming in from this angle or something. It, it tells the story and you watch the story and along the way you start to get creeped out and then you get more creeped out. You get in more fact, creeped the, out. the more people that go into the film, we know our success will be measured by how many people go watch the film that have absolutely no idea what's behind it. Yeah. 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 It's, like we said, it's a Trojan horse. Yeah. So we want people, we want the majority of the audience going and seeing, thinking they're going to see a film about you know, slavery and horrible white people doing things to black people. And, yeah. and then they come out of it and go, oh, like we said, it could be a week, it could be an hour, it could be six months, and they're going to be driving in their car and going, oh, that's what was going on in that film. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that crazy the Matrix, film. The Matrix is a great example because The Matrix had that effect. There were people that um, that hit them on one level right away, but like the level at which it hit other people immediately who understood the depth of the philosophy of it was very different. And then the people that it hit on the superficial level, it hit them later on. And there are people who mm -hmm. describe that They'll tell you that about their experience with the Matrix movies and realizing I watched this at one age and at one perspective in life and then I figured out what it meant later and then people said the same about Be For Vendetta. People say the same even about things like Braveheart um, or Gladiator or other impacting movies that it didn't really hit them all the layers of those movies and how powerful they were until later on. And I feel like this is going to be one of those things where people watch it in the theater or they watch it wherever they're watching it at and then you know, even a year down the line, they're going, whoa, when they get hit with a whole new wave of something that hadn't occurred to them yet about what the movie was pointing to. Plus, and we could also, if we do this right, which we're planning on doing, we could have multi-generational success with the film, just like those films you speak of. Because yeah. the whole red pill thing is from The Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. The red pill. It's everywhere. This yeah. is, we're attempting that this is going to be a very memeable film. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think. Quotable. Yeah. And one of the most important things is that it doesn't, it doesn't just deal with like the top layer of corruption that like oh everybody's seen that in a million movies and everybody understands that it like it's it starts there there's there's the happy facade of what's what mr smith pretends is going on now you're free and blah 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 and pretty quickly you go okay he has he has schemes going on but it keeps going down deeper and deeper into the you know cuz it's when you get down to to tyranny and enslavement it isn't just somebody with a gun pointed at you saying do what i say there's, it's so much more just profoundly evil, and the, and and this will dig down layer after layer after layer to show the real mentality of the people who gravitate towards you know the the highest positions of power. I hate to call them highest, the lowest positions of power, <laughs> but also the mentality of the people that are being enslaved. Yeah, and, and again, when they when they see how the tricks are done. That's like, you know, a magician. If he goes out and the audience goes, whoa, and he goes, here, look, here's how I did it. And then he does it again. They're like, oh, okay, now we know how you did it. And when, like, I think the most important the thing about making this, um, that's why I made the animated one, but the, the, the important thing about making this into a feature film is to have everybody see here is what, here is how these people function. Like the worst of the worst, full-fledged sociopaths which don't care anything about you. Here is what they do. Here is what they're like. Here is how they function. And here is what they're going to pretend to be to you. So when you see them and you go, oh, he's doing exactly what we saw in that movie, maybe he has the exact same designs. It's basically training people to recognize the, the, the deceptions and manipul manipulations of you know, full-fledged psychopaths. It's idea and and philosophy driven and what's more palatable to everyone than human freedom at its core, except, you know, we have to do the thing of kind of find a way in which that's deliverable to the widest audience. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that the way to do that, to get this in, to the widest number of people who are going to, it's going to appeal to them for different reasons, is to do it via the Jones Plantation. So. Yeah. And now is the time to do it. Like there are so many people who even you know a few months ago never would have paid any attention to anything philosophical or political or anything. They're just, eh, leave me alone. I'm just living my life. I don't care about that stuff. Until a few months ago. Until a few months ago. And now suddenly they're, they're open to, to thinking about things. And it's like you never can tell what thing is going to suddenly resonate with people. Like I've made a bunch of little videos and some of them are just silly little nothings. 
I'm like the tiny dot and I'm allowed to rob you. And different people would be like, well, that changed my life. And I was like, that stupid little thing changed your life. <laughs> well, then let us do a real movie and real. really change, you know, the, the outlooks and the lives of a huge number of people in, you know, the most effective and substantive way that we can. And I think this is it. This is, you know, as much as I love my novel, The Iron Web, I'd write if one thing I ever do can be a movie, this is the thing I want to be it. And thanks to you for thinking you <laughs> thinking make, of making that little thing into a full feature movie. You make a lot of that. I think probably a lot of people watched that and thought that should be a feature film. I just happened to be the guy that reached out to you. I, it never even freaking occurred to me. Really? <laughs> I never thought of making that one into a movie. Yeah. It, which it's is, really funny now I'm because, sort of embarrassed because like it's so obvious. It's really funny because <laughs> when he brought the idea to me and you started talking about it and then, you know, you were we had the first meeting with you and we talked about it. It was just sort of like, yeah, <clears throat> duh. Like this, what? duh. Like this is the thing that of should be the this thing. Is supposed to be. Amazing. Um, and you have like so many different movements right now where there's a lot of um, there's people who understand there's something wrong. Um, you know, with the world and that you know, freedoms are under fire in certain ways, but they they have their perspective they're coming at it from. And so I think there's a lot of confusion out there. I think movies that drive at the heart of that can't not win because even if the audience isn't conscious of what it is they love so much about the movie it's going to be something that drives at the nature you know the nature of human beings anything that drives at the nature of human beings makes them viscerally love it so they're yeah. going to identify with it the thing that's that's great to me is when you can make something that makes all of them get on the same side and recognize that's the thing we all have to resist, regardless of like what our own priorities and values are and, and how we may differ in little details. And nobody's going to watch it and be cheering for Mr. Jones and Mr. Smith. They're all going to recognize, wow, this is this is the reality and this is this is what we're up against. And it even it even goes into the 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 how the sociopaths pit us against each other and play those games so that we're bickering with each other while this is going on behind the scenes and to, to let people have a glimpse of how they're being played. And how conniving they are within their group to each other. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's this it's this creepy game all the way, you know, all the way down. And I think the more people can see that. I, I think a lot of people are waking up anyway to, oh, this is all bogus and this is all ridiculous and all but I don't, the vast majority of people have no idea just how, you know, maliciously insane it is. They might just think, ah, politicians are just bumbling, self-serving idiots. It's like, they're way worse than that. Or some of the politicians are just that, but there are things going on that are way more devious and, and insidious than that. And this, this movie would show that in all its anti-glory. Yeah. And then how do we make a film look like a million dollars for $125,000? Um, the main thing is the people. I've been doing this for 15 years. I have a roster of people all along the film process that are chomping at the bit to work on this, chomping at the bit to do something creative like this, especially during this lockdown. Mm -hmm. They basically just destroyed the industry. Yeah. So, I mean, I have people calling me like, I, you know, what, what are we doing? We need to do something. We need to do something. Yeah. There's people losing their marbles. And, not but but also... It's, it's made them open up to say, man, I've been, you know, working on these commercials or I've been working on these corporate videos. I want to do something creative now. Yeah. Because it's just that whole bullshit life just got swept away. Yeah. And so. Run over by a truck. Let's give yeah. them an outlet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And a really dang useful outlet to, to do something with just massive substance to it. And every, yeah, every frame in the film, every element in the frame, every pixel in the frame is going to have a purpose that serves the overarching larger picture and the message of the film. Mm -hmm. And that is something you just, it, it, it just adds something to the film that just makes the screen breathe. The things that do something, the, the best films, aren't just films. They, they're they not just films. They're a message or an idea that actually movably shifts culture. Yeah. And the thing, movies that I can name that did that all in, and shifted culture in one direction are V for Vendetta, The Matrix, and the Star Wars trilogy. And Star Wars in particular was massive because... I feel like if you look at the memes on the internet from Star Wars and the way the memes are paralleled against bodies of government today and how they act 
right. and you have the mockery of you know imperialism with the empire and freedom with the rebels and these movies impacted people subconsciously so much so and psychologically so much so that in a way it inoculated the culture against worse or or bad ideas that were going to be introduced later on inevitably by crappy people in power and there's a whole part of the culture this doesn't work on because they watched those movies and they saw through certain things because they were inoculated and so i think this movie stands to be something that's not just a movie it's not just entertaining but it's literally going to accomplish something it's going to psychologically subliminally inoculate an entire crowd of people against more bullshit and it's it's sort of uh, i wouldn't exactly say politically neutral but it doesn't matter what you are it doesn't matter if you're democrat republican or you don't care at all it it will teach everybody stuff that that will make them question things that they took for granted before my goal is to get the people who want to be free all on the same side against the people who don't want them to be free and that's while the people who don't want them to be free are being mr smith and playing all these games to pit them against each other and deceive them and make them scared and and all that stuff and this is just um th this this movie idea is just it's it's the best way i've ever seen um, that I can hopefully contribute to 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 actually get these ideas to way more people um, than have ever been exposed to them before. And this is kind of a corny cliche, but we don't just need your help for money, but we need your help. We, we need to build the community. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because this is, I mean, when it comes to a, a project this huge, and you know better than I do what all is involved, um, but it... It's not something that somebody can do in their garage by themselves <laughs> to do it right, to make it have real impact because we'll be competing with, you know, a bunch of Hollywood movies that look perfect and sound per perfect and, and all that. And I can't do that myself. Like, you know, that side of things. And we're doing it as slim as we can. Yeah. The slimmest budget we possibly can. I yeah. Mean, while making it look like. It, yeah. Yeah. While making it look like we had a way bigger <laughs> budget than we did. Tenfold. Yeah. As far as getting these ideas to the general public, I've I don't I've never seen an opportunity like this to get these ideas to that many people that quickly and to be that thorough and in depth with getting them to see things that they've never even thought about before in, in the form of a fictional story to get to totally creep them out. It, it it almost like you were saying before, it almost turns into a horror story and. One of the most important things is I think even normal people who watch it and are sort of traumatized and it hasn't even all the way sunk in are still going to go, wow, you got to see this. I don't even know what I think about it yet, but you got to see this. Because right. um, it, like you said, it may occur to them a day, a week, a year later, but I think very quickly they're going to go, that was pretty profound. I'm going to tell other people about it even before I've sorted out in my head what all to make of it. That's right. I don't know what to make of this, but I got to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a whacked out experience. That was intense. That was emotional. And I don't exactly know what just happened. Mm -hmm. One more thing that's important is that getting the funding this way, there, first of all, there's no way we're going to be able to get the funding from Hollywood yeah. and do the, film, the thing properly. Yep. Doing it this way, we're going to have complete creative control over the film. Yeah. And do I the would exact never film. do it if we didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's exactly right. And we can do the exact film that we want to do. Yep. Yep. So please, everybody go to our Indiegogo page. Um, check out all the stuff there. There'll be... A bunch of stuff for you to check out. Um, if you're not at all familiar with it, you can go check out the the original animated version, which is obviously the super short and simplified version of what the, the movie will actually be. Um, but some of you may not even know that much about it, so you can check that out. Um, check out all the perks, all the things you can get if you if you help us out and you invest in this thing. Um, there's, there's a lot to see there, and if you have suggestions, let us know. Um, we are determined to make this happen, and, you know, the more you help the better job we can do making it a reality and making it an impact on the whole freaking world.